describe yourself in terms of your ethnic identity? How would you describe yourself? How would you describe yourself? Well, how would you? Here in Los Angeles, teenage Jews with ancestry from all over the world make up a key part of our diverse Jewish community. These teens have parents and grandparents who immigrated from countries in the Middle East, in Eastern and Western Europe, in South America, and other countries in North America. But have you ever wondered, what kind of connection do each of these teens hold to their own family's heritage? Well, let's find out. Where are your parents and grandparents from? Um, my entire family is from Iran. My grandparents from my mom's side were born in Iraq. My parents are from Israel and my grandparents are from Morocco. And then my mom was born in Israel in Jerusalem. She moved to Canada. And she grew up there and went to college there. My mom's side of the family is from Czechoslovakia. And my dad was born in Israel. My mom's side of the family is from Uzbekistan. And on my dad's side, my grandma's from Colombia, and her parents are from Egypt and Syria. And then my dad's father is from Paraguay. My dad's side of the family is from Ukraine and Romania. My dad was born in the Ukraine. My grandmother's from Berlin. She's a Holocaust survivor and escaped from war-stricken Europe in the early 1940s. How would you describe yourself in terms of your ethnic identity? I would consider myself an Israeli first. American Persian Jew. Moroccan Israeli Jew. Half Hispanic, kind of, even though I don't speak Spanish. A Russian Jewish American. I'm an American. How would you say that your family's origins have influenced your Jewish lifestyle? It's the language at home because we speak Hebrew to each other and English too because of my own origin. And the food would be different because we have food that came from Iraq and then from Canada and we have some Israeli food. Well, I think it does a lot, especially because Sephardic Jews are able to eat more stuff over Passover. There's like different rules, so that's really nice. I sometimes tease my Ashkenazi friends about that. My family, they kind of had to grow up hiding their Judaism and hiding their cultures and customs. So, um, unfortunately, some of that passed on. How do you think that your celebration of Shabbat and other Jewish holidays differs from Jewish households from different Jewish backgrounds? Every Shabbat dinner, like, we go to my grandma's house, the entire family's there. The food on Shabbat is definitely different. Uh, my grandma makes a lot of Moroccan foods, and it's delicious. Obviously, if you come from a background in a family of orth Orthodox Jews and, and other customs that they, that they strongly observe, it's, it's going to be uh, inevitably different. How do you think that your family's background has influenced the way you see American society? Because I'm exposed to so much culture and variety of different languages and foods that I think sometimes America may be lacking some culture. Because I was born here, uh, it hasn't influenced me too much and I feel I have, I am pretty assim assimilated. It's definitely different. I kind of grew up with more of like kind of Russian European mindset on like manners, you know, how to you know how to behave in public. It's different. What kind of connection do you feel to the country that your parents and grandparents came from? I feel very connected to Israel because m both my parents were born in Israel and it's the home of Jews and Israel and kosher foods. I've never been to Morocco, but the customs that my family brings from Morocco, I have a strong connection with. Not much. I went to Colombia for the first time just this last year, and it was really, really interesting to go and visit. And like, I'd love to go there again, but I don't really have like a connection to Colombia or Prague when I went to visit Prague. Two generations from now, what unique customs and rituals do you see your children and grandchildren still participating in? I have a feeling that even though we'll probably be fairly assimilated into American culture by then, I feel like me, they'll still respect that they have a long line of Iranian background uh, behind that. At my bar mitzvah, 
I had a henna, which was like a kind of a ceremony where I had henna put on my hand and everyone else had henna put on their hand and it's for luck. Um, I would hope Shabbat still. I'm not sure if that counts as unique. I definitely see my children and grandchildren still having a henna at, the, at their bar of mitzvahs. Once I brush up on my Russian, <laughs> definitely Russian. Do you think that American Jews could be more sensitive to the unique perspectives and customs that you have to offer? I think Jewish Americans, American Jews, they're very accepting to different cultural backgrounds. More tolerance is always welcome. Because mm -hmm. we're always very sensitive and courteous. I think it's the Russians that need to be more sensitive <laughs> about American Jews. <laughs> I don't think that people take one's religious beliefs and customs lightly. And I, and I think, of course, it differs from the situation, but I think there is always something in a person that should give them the, the chance to see someone's background and to see someone's religious belief. How do you think your family's ancestry has influenced the way you look at Israel? I think because of my uh, family coming from Iran, I know how important it is to have a country that can guarantee safety to a group of people. My parents are Israeli and grew up in Israel. I feel like that gave me the opportunity to be able to go to Israel more than other Jews in America have the opportunity to do. I think it's influenced me a lot just because my grandfather founded a Center for Sephardic Education in Jerusalem. What do you think that your friends that aren't from the same uh, country as you would find if they switched places with you and lived in your house for a week? A variety of different languages, from English, Hebrew, Iraq, and Yiddish, no, Arabic and Yiddish, to um, very exotic foods that we have in my house, different dishes from around the world. I mean, other than like my dad's accent, which everyone tends to laugh at, <laughs> I don't think it's any different. My dad and my mom, because I assume they wouldn't be switching. Um, I have four TVs, I have two Playstations. Do you think you will want to marry someone with the same Jewish background as you, uh, or not? I'm not 100% sure whether or not I'm going to marry someone who is Persian. Um, I'm probably going to marry someone who is Jewish. That is something I want to keep in my family. I don't think it's really as important to marry a Moroccan Jew. I do want, I definitely want to marry a Jewish person. Well, my parents want me to marry someone Jewish. Um, they actually don't want me to marry anyone Russian. <laughs> it's a tough one. I know that my parents and my family would support any decision that I make, but for me, I don't know necessarily how comfortable I'd be marrying out of my religion. Well, we thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule to meet with us. This has truly been a very enlightening interview, and thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Zach. So. The LA Jewish community has grown dramatically in recent decades. Most LA Jewish teens are American-born, U.S. citizens who have never known a life in another country. Now, we have a better understanding of what these teens have to offer with their traditions for future generations to come. Thank you.